Good morning, and welcome to worship on this seventh and last Sunday of Eastertide and the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend from Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in beautiful Bellevue, Washington. Our service this morning is led musically by members of our Mosaic Band as we sing the songs of the Tizay community, an ecumenical Christian monastic fraternity in Tizay, Burgundy, France, founded in 1940 by Brother Roger, a Protestant Christian from the Reformed tradition. The story of today, today's beginning is a remarkable one. At age 25, Brother Roger left his native Switzerland to live in France, where his mother was from. Years before, Brother Roger had suffered from tuberculosis, and during his teenage years and young adulthood and his long convalescence, he discerned and came to accept a sense of calling to create a community to serve and welcome others. When World War II began, Brother Roger determined straight away to deal with those most dramatically impacted, including Jewish and other refugees fleeing the abuses of the Nazi army and the government of Germany. He chose to resettle in the small village of Tizé, as it was located close to the demarcation line dividing France in two, thus well situated for sheltering refugees fleeing the war. The then small community, led primarily by Brother Roger and his sister, Genevieve, served all those who came seeking shelter until late 1942, when the Gestapo seized the small house that served as the first Tizé community center, while Brother Roger was back in Switzerland raising funds. He was not able to return to France until the autumn of 1944, when the country was liberated. While in Switzerland, Brother Roger was joined by three other men, forming the first Tizé fraternity, which grew to seven by the time they returned to, to Tizé. From that small group grew a global movement committed to serving Christ by serving the poor, living humbly in community, and welcoming all to simple but powerful worship, for which Tizé is now most well known today, becoming one of the world's most important sites for Christian pilgrimage, with a focus on youth. Annually, more than 100,000 people, most of them young adults, journey from around the world to today for prayer, Bible study, and communal work and worship. Throughout the community's ecumenical outlook, they have encouraged others to live with them in a spirit of kindness, simplicity, and reconciliation. Folks from all sorts of religious backgrounds, Reformed, Episcopal, Anglican, Catholic, Lutheran, and Christians from all sorts of traditions are joined by others with sometimes little or no religious background, finding common ground in worshiping God. Sadly, Brother Roger was killed in a knife attack by a mentally ill woman in 2005 at age 90. Yet his spirit lives on both in the community of Tizé and in its beautiful, powerful, simple, but sublime music. Most songs are humble choruses that are repeated as prayers and meditations. This morning, we invite you to join with us, the Mosaic Band, in singing these songs of worship, praise, and peace. Welcome all. Our service continues now with two of the most well-known songs of today, Wait for the Lord and Come and Fill Our Hearts.
Let us pray on this Memorial Day weekend, remembering those who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to country for the sake of liberty and justice for all. Holy God, your love is stronger than death and your life-giving power has no end. We commend to your eternal care all who died in military service for nation and neighbor, even as we lament the violence of war. Comfort and sustain all those who mourn. Heal the wounded in body, mind, and spirit. Bring justice, freedom, and dignity to all people and an end to war throughout the earth so that all may know your promised peace through the one who is the resurrection and the hope, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lessons this week are from the message paraphrase of the Bible by Eugene Peterson. The first lesson, a reading from Acts. When they, Jesus and his disciples, were together for the last time, they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Is this the time? He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the world. These were his last words. As they watched, he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud. They stood there staring into the empty sky. Suddenly, two men appeared in white robes. They said, you Galileans, why are you just standing here looking up at an empty sky? This very Jesus, who was taken up from among you to heaven, will come as certainly and mysteriously as he left. So they left the mountain called Olives and returned to Jerusalem. It was little over half a mile. They went to the upper room they had been using as a meeting place. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They agreed that they were in this for good, completely together in prayer, the women included, also Jesus' mother Mary and his brothers. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The psalm is drawn from Psalm 68. Up with God, down with his enemies. Adversaries, run for the hills. Gone like a puff of smoke, like a blob of wax in the fire. One look at God and the wicked vanish. When the righteous see God in action, they'll laugh, they'll sing, they'll laugh and sing for joy. Sing hymns to God, all heaven, sing out. Clear the way for the coming cloud rider. Enjoy God, cheer when you see him. Father of orphans, champion of widows, is God in his holy house. God makes homes for the homeless, leads prisoners to freedom, but leaves rebels to rotten hell. God, when you took the lead with your people, when you marched out into the wild, earth shook, sky broke out in a sweat, God was on the march. Even Sinai trembled at the sight of God on the move, at the sight of Israel's God. You pour out rain in buckets, O God, thorn and cactus become an oasis for your people to camp in and enjoy. You set them up in business. They went from rags to riches. Sing, O kings of the earth, sing praises to the Lord. There he is, sky rider, striding the ancient skies. Listen, he's calling in thunder, rumbling, rolling thunder. Call out bravo to God, the high God of Israel. His splendor and strength rise huge as thunderheads. A terrible beauty, O God, streams from your sanctuary. 
It's Israel's strong God. He gives power and might to his people. O you, his people, bless God. The second lesson is a reading from 1 Peter. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. If you're abused because of Christ, count yourself fortunate. It's the spirit of God and his glory in you that brought you to the notice of others. So be content with who you are and don't put on airs. God's strong hand is on you. He'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on your faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the good news as recorded in St. John, the 17th chapter. Jesus, having said these things, raised his eyes in prayer and said, Father, it's time. Display the bright splendor of your Son, so the Son in turn may show your bright splendor. You put him in charge of everything human, so he might give real and eternal life to all in his charge. And this is the real and eternal life that they know you, the one and true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. And now, Father, glorify me with your very own splendor, the very splendor I had in your presence before there was a world. I spelled out your character in detail to the men and women you gave me. They were yours in the first place, then you gave them to me, and they have now done as you said. They know now, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that everything you gave me is firsthand from you. For your message you gave to me, I gave to them. And they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the God-rejecting world, but for those you gave me for they are yours by right. Everything mine is yours and yours mine, and my life is on display in them. For I am no longer going to be visible in the world. They'll continue in the world while I return to you. Holy Father, guard them, guard them as they pursue this life that you conferred as a gift through me so they can be one heart and one mind as we are one heart and mind. This is good news. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from his Son Jesus Christ who prayed that his followers would be united in heart and mind. Amen. Jesus was a person of prayer. He prayed often. He prayed in private and he prayed publicly. He prayed routinely and he prayed when the events of his life were anything but routine. He prayed like other Jewish rabbis did, at meals, at religious festivals, 
in the morning and in the evening. But he also prayed unlike anyone else, any other rabbi or religious leader that his followers had ever heard, so much so that they asked Jesus to teach them to pray like that. Jesus was a person of prayer. His prayer practices and some of his actual prayers are recorded for us in Scripture. Six of his prayers are found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Matthew 11 and Luke 10, Jesus prays in thanksgiving to his heavenly Father that God had opened the spiritual eyes of his disciples. You have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, but revealed them to little children. In John 11, Jesus prayed before the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. And as recorded in the following chapter, John 12, just after his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, which we commemorate each year on Palm Sunday, Jesus prayed that through what was about to happen, his betrayal, arrest, his condemnation, his crucifixion, and his resurrection, that his Father would be glorified. Later that same week, Jesus prayed so fervently in the Garden of Gethsemane, just prior to his arrest, that we're told that he sweat blood. And the following day, Good Friday, while hanging in agony upon the cross, he prayed for mercy for his executioners. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then his final prayer before he died, a prayer of ultimate faith. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Additionally, Jesus did teach his disciples to pray, giving them a model and an outline for how they should pray, what's come to be known as the Lord's Prayer. And while scripture don't record the actual words, Jesus prayed at other times too, at his baptism, routinely in private retreat following times of preaching and teaching and healing before walking on water, before choosing the 12 who would become his inner circle of disciples, before breaking bread, at meals, and at miracle meals, like the feeding of the 5,000, during the Passover memorial meal in the upper room, and after his resurrection, he sat down and broke bread with two of his followers in Emmaus. American pastor, author, and evangelist of the late 1800s and the first two decades of the 1900s, R.A. Torrey, wrote that Jesus prayed early in the morning as well as all through the night, that he prayed both before and after the great events of his life, and that he took extra time to pray when life was unusually busy. Jesus was a person of prayer. And we're so blessed to have the model of his prayer, his prayerful life, the prayer he taught his disciples, and the prayers recorded in the Gospels, including the longest of them, as recorded in John chapter 17, a part of which is our Gospel lesson for today. Scholars sometimes call this the high priestly prayer or the farewell prayer. Others refer to it as the intercessory prayer. For in much of it, Jesus prays for his followers and those who will come to faith through them, for future generations of Christians, for you and me. In a way, this is Jesus offering up what we might call the prayers of the people. It contains praise for his Father in heaven, but it's mostly composed of petitions on behalf of others. Routinely in worship, including today's worship, We offer intercessory prayers, the prayers of the people. We pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. Like Jesus taught, we pray for the most vulnerable, for the poor, the hungry, the imprisoned, the sick, the grieving, victims of human oppression and of natural disasters. And we pray for one another. We pray for the whole church. We pray for our partners in ministry, we pray for our congregation, for its leaders and its members, for its mission and its ministries, for its present work and for vision for the future. During this time, we particularly pray about the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. 
for those who are sick, for those who are caring for them, for those who are setting policies to protect us, for those who are risking their own health to serve us, for those who are dying, and for those who are grieving, and for those who are searching for better forms of treatment and hopefully soon a vaccine for prevention. When Jesus prays, including this intercessory prayer before the events that led to his death on the cross, this farewell prayer, we get an insight into who he was as a person of prayer and a, and a man of faith. It's been said that genuine prayer often reveals a, a person's innermost self. Well, in this prayer recorded in John 17, we get a, a rare opportunity to see into the heart of Christ as he gives honor to his heavenly Father, confirms his commitment to following God's will, lifts up his disciples and affirms his trust in the one who sent him into the world out of immeasurable love and mercy and grace. The sentences of this prayer are simple, but the ideas are deep, moving, and meaningful. It's a prayer rich with relational language of the Father and of the Son, of their union since the time before time, of their oneness of mind and mission. It's also a prayer of reconciliation and restoration, although we need to remember what came just before it to realize that. Jesus prays for his disciples, the same group whom he had just spoken to at the end of the last chapter, John 16. There they have boldly claimed that now they believe in Jesus fully and completely beyond any shadow of a doubt, and they would follow him without hesitation, without limitation. Jesus knew this was the desire of their hearts, but he also knew that just like us, his followers today, his disciples then would not all live out these lofty desires nor always back up their courageous claims. Indeed, he tells them, in the coming hours and days, they will deny him, disown him, turn from him, and run and hide when he needs them most. That's a very difficult conversation. The conversation to which the opening sentence in chapter 17 refers, when Jesus said these things. And yet, knowing full well he would be betrayed by one of them, Judas, and denied three times in one night by another, Peter, and abandoned at the cross by all of them, save John, Jesus prays for his disciples in these his final hours. I think some folks have a hard time thinking of God as able to love them or care about them or, or forgive them. I think some folks feel like their past, their mistakes, their sins, their failures somehow disqualify them from God's grace. Yet here is Jesus praying for these far from perfectly faithful, far from perfectly courageous, far from perfectly loyal disciples, praying that their faith would grow even deeper, praying that they would continue his mission in the world, praying for God, God to guard them and guide them, praying that they would be unified, one heart, one mind. When Jesus prays, he prays from a position of mercy, a posture of grace, and a place of deep love for his followers, imperfect as they, imperfect as we are. He prays for their spiritual strength and the success of their ministry. He prays for them to live in harmony. He prays for them because he loves them, in spite of their human fragility. Or I would even go so far as to say because of their human fragility. Jesus loves them and loves us because he sees them and sees us for who we are, not who we 
want to be, not who we long to be, not who we sometimes pretend to be, but often fail to be. Jesus loves them and us like a parent loves a little child, in part because that child needs to be loved, needs to be nurtured, needs to be cared for, needs to be led and guided, needs to be instructed and sometimes gently disciplined in love. When Jesus prays, he is motivated by love, love for his Father and love for us, whom he claimed and called his own brothers and sisters. When Jesus prays, and when his powerful words of prayers are recorded for us in Scripture, we get a glimpse into the very heart, the very mind of God. We peer into heaven, into this perfect relationship of the Father and the Son who with the Spirit are ever one. When Jesus prays, and we're granted the privilege to listen, we witness love and mercy and grace incarnate. How beautiful it is. How powerful an expression of what our own prayers can and should be when Jesus prays. Amen. Thank you for your ongoing support of the mission and ministries of Cross of Christ. We appreciate your prayers, your notes of encouragement and support. your joining us for these recorded worship services and for your ongoing offerings. While we are certainly still learning new ways to worship, grow, share, serve, and welcome, and while out of love for one another and all of our neighbors near and far, we continue to refrain from most on-campus activities. I wanted to remind you that your church, Cross of Christ, is not closed. We've not been furloughed and our work in the world has by no means come to a halt. Thanks to you and your offerings, we continue to serve in Jesus' name in many, many important ways, including through our ARC Early Learning Center and in partnership with Congregations for the Homeless, the Sophia Way, and Hope Leak locally, among others and the Maasai Girls Lutheran Secondary School and the Plaster House and our sister communities of Arusha and Manduli, Tanzania. You are making a big difference. A lot of big differences, actually. There are several ways that you can continue to do this, to make your donations during this time. You can drop a check in the mail to Cross of Christ, or you can come by and place your offerings in envelopes in our secured lock drop box mailbox in the parking lot. You can give online at www.crossofchristbellevue.org, or you can contact our bookkeeper, Denise Fuentes, who can help you set up automatic deposits for this time or for ongoingly. Thank you once more. And thanks to Mosaic, the band, for today's musical offering. Ubi caritas et amor, where charity and love prevail.
Our prayers to the people today will be both spoken and sung. The corporate refrain, which the band will lead us on, is today's song, O Lord, Hear My Prayer. With spoken petitions between, each ending, in faith we call upon you. Please join us in prayer. under siege by the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Bless all who have contracted the virus, all who are waiting test results, all who are worried, all who are dying. Comfort those who mourn their loved ones among the more than 320,000 victims worldwide, including the family of Ellie Gilbertson Smith, resident of Sagebrook Senior Living Center, and faithful member of the monthly worship service offered there by members of Cross of Christ and others upon her death and following her graveside service Monday. In faith, we call upon you. hear our prayer for nurses and doctors, medical techs and lab techs, attendants and aides, housekeeping crews and food service workers, and all who are responding with courage and self-sacrifice to the epidemic as they treat victims in hospitals, doctor's offices, labs, senior centers, hospice facilities, and in the homes of the sick and suffering. Grant wisdom to researchers, knowledge to scientists, and all who are seeking treatments and vaccines. Lead those making critical medical decisions and setting important policies that they may protect us and all. In faith, we call upon you. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. hear our prayer once more on this Memorial Day weekend for those who died in military service to our nation and our world. May the memory of their sacrifice stir us to greater commitment to honor them by continuing to strive for peace, justice, liberty, and dignity for all people everywhere. In faith, we call upon you. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Lord, hear our prayer for our Cross of Christ faith family, for pastors, staff, and lay leaders dedicated to the mission and ministries that you have entrusted to us, for all those we serve, including the children and families of our ARC Early Learning Center, and for those who serve through Cross of Christ, our neighbors near and far. Hear our prayer for our members and their loved ones who are in need in any way, including those who have asked for public prayers. Members Kay, Anna, Dennis, Vigo, Alma, Fred, Linda, 
Ed, Phyllis, Audrey, Janice, Priscilla, Jean, Doris, Bill, Betty, Judy, Wanda, Marlis, and Phil. Former members John, Jenny, and Buzz. Family members Marilia, Justin, Spike, Ashley, Dale, Tim, Brad, Kristen, and Jeff. And friends, including Todd, Onik, and all who are on our hearts. In faith, we call upon you. healer and our hope, our source of light and love, our Savior and our Lord. In faith we offer our prayers, spoken and unspoken, as we call upon you. Continue in prayer as our Lord taught his followers to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you again for joining us in worship today. We pray our time together has been a blessing for you. And we encourage you to share a link to these recordings to your friends and family and neighbors that you think might be blessed by them as well. We also hope that you enjoyed singing the songs of today with our worship band today. We continue to strive to offer a variety of worship experiences that are Christ-centered, bible based, creative, and inviting for all, even as we worship together differently during this time. Speaking of exploring new worship experiences, next Sunday we want to invite the whole Cross of Christ community to worship together at one time, 10 a.m., from wherever you are. We'll be posting the recorded service online via YouTube at that time and sending out a notice earlier Sunday morning of where you can find it and how you can connect. The service will be pre-recorded like all of our worship has been since March 8. This is our 12th Sunday of recorded worship. But in addition to inviting you to watch it with us at the same time, you'll also have the opportunity to interact with us during the worship with members of the worship team. I and Ben and Colin will join you online to answer questions, take comments, just to say hi via the ongoing interactive chat that'll be going on during worship. Do you especially appreciate some aspect of worship? Let us know. Have ideas for something we might try in future services? Tell us that. Have uh, an idea of what we might do beyond worship to record and share with you? Or are you just wondering about how the recordings take place? How do we get those cool shots of the bell tower and the organist's pedal and the overhead camera views and the stained glass windows flooded with light. We'd be happy to share with you some of our behind the scenes info too. Following the service, we'll shift over to Zoom for a time of fellowship and catching up. I'll facilitate the conversation with Colin and Ben and Christy and others providing tech support. Since next week is also Pentecost Sunday and the color of the day is red to commemorate the work of the Holy Spirit, we'll all be wearing red and we'll invite you to wear red to the 
Zoom gathering too. Look for the links to the interactive recorded service on YouTube and the Zoom Fellowship to come to you by email soon. Monday is Memorial Day. It's a paid holiday for our office staff, and so office operations will be closed. But on Tuesday, Office Administrator Judy Geisberg will be back to answer phones and to respond to your emails. Our regular office hours are Monday to Thursday, 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also, with the exception of our ARC Early Learning Center, these recorded sessions and a few other prearranged activities, we remind you that the building remains closed for everyone's safety and health. To all visitors, including members, if you need to come by to be on campus or to enter one of the buildings, please make arrangements with me ahead of time. Thanks. And now, our benediction. Benedictus Seven, also known as Benedictus Qui Vene, from the first line in Latin, is often sung at the end of Tizé worship services in France. We'll sing today in both Latin and English. This will be our sung benediction and our closing song. And we hope you'll sing along with us. Thanks again to our Mosaic band as they come once more to lead us in worship. To Bonnie and Mark and Emily, and of course, our Director of Worship and Music Ministries, Ben for leading this beautiful service. And now, we invite you to join with us as the band gathers and we sing our benediction and the closing song. said, as I have been sent, so also I send you. By God's grace, through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to worship God, grow in faith, share the gospel, serve others, welcome all. Thanks be to God. Holy God,